My article was written by Sorgio Vigaletto and called The Italian Comedy of the Economic Mirror. In it, the author refers to the Italian medio, or the Italian everyday man, who is a ubiquitous protagonist of the Comedie alla Italiana, or Italian comedy. These films, including Dino Ricci's Il Sorpasso and Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita, reflect the socially shared values and common experiences of, quote, normal Italian people. The concept of Italian everyman, however, is not new to the Comedie alla Italiana. It's featured in the comedies of the fascist era, neo-realist films, and post-war melodramas seen before. In Rigoletto's essay, he does not mention, maintain that the Italian everyman is different from the ordinary types appearing in other genres, but rather wishes to stress its distinctive connectedness to the moral dilemmas and the social contradictions of the economic miracle. The Commedia all'Italiana generally excludes female points of view and women's concerns altogether. The films reproduce the typical gender-oppressive discourse in which masculinity and its interests dominate the screen during these years. The masculinity is also defined rather homogeneously. The Italian everyman excludes those, quote, dissident masculinities that eschew sexual normalization. Looking at the comedies of the 50s and 60s, one can see that homosexuality is far from being an invisible presence in these films. Rigoletta's essay questions how the straightness of the central characters is asserted and naturalized in both La Dolce Vita and Il Sorpasso. Furthermore, he investigates what alternative meanings may be associated with the subordinate roles of the gay characters in both films. Roberto and Bruno's relationship in the El Sorpasso is that of a buddy film. Much of the action is based on the intense emotional attachment between the two male protagonists. Although Roberto and Bruno spend much of their time together in a car, discussing their lives and growing increasingly close to one another, their emotions are not always oblique. In doing so, their relationship complies with the dominant social conventions in which the love between two men cannot be clearly spoken in films. Women are used to disavow any suspicion of sexual involvement in this erotically ambiguous male-to-male -male relationship. They tend to have no true function in the story except to signal that men are straight. In Il Sorpasso, the female characters merely have secondary roles, most often marked by traits that are at odds with the buddy relationship between Bruno and Roberto. For example, the emotional coldness with Bruno's wife the ambition of Bruno's daughter and the young partners of rich businessmen, the sexual looseness and pretentiousness with the blonde woman at the nightclub, and lastly, the flirtatiousness with Roberto's aunties. The theme of heterosexuality is reinforced by scenes and dialogue throughout the film that distinguish Bruno and Robert fr Roberto from the other. For example, after Bruno confesses his sadness for their sudden separation at the tavern, he quickly reassures Roberto that he is not queer, saying, I hope you don't think I fancy men. Additionally, when Bruno speaks to Roberto in his car about Gabriel Garcia Lorca, a Spanish poet and dramatist, he makes the gesture of touching his ear, which is in Italian cultural practice is used to refer homophobically to gay men. Moreover, Roberto's character is not exactly macho. He is presented as a rather refined and slightly feminine young man. He cannot drive, feels sick in, Robert in Bruno's car, and gets embarrassingly, embarrassingly drunk after only a few glasses of cognac. In order to defend, defend his masculinity and the integrity of the buddy relationship with Bruno, the film distinguishes the two male protagonists from homosexuals in both covert and overt ways. In summary, the process of setting up a naturally heterosexual identity and disavowing or expelling strategies that are, quote, homosexual, helped to maintain the stability of the gender construction of l'italiano media. It also shows that the Italian everyman is not an inclusive list of collective identification, but instead carefully constructed by carefully defined exclusions. Body in the Autostrada, Angela Restivo discusses the changing identity of Italy during the boom period of the 1950s and 60s. In Italian, Il Sorpasso is the act of passing another car on the road. The Autostrada refers to an Italian highway. Both become resonant images throughout the film. While Il Sorpasso is almost entirely a representation of the new Italy, it cannot help but to remain situated against the backdrop of an older, more traditional way of life. One reason for this was the extremely abrupt onset of the economic miracle, which we previously discussed. Two distinct Italian identities existed simultaneously during this time, which we see in the presentation of Roberto and Bruno. Roberto represents the older values of reunification, savings, and investment, while Bruno represents the Roman who lived a lifestyle of bravado, seduction, and street smarts. In one scene, we see Bruno break a vase in Roberto's bathroom. This small yet significant event foreshadows the many successive ruptures that Bruno will inflict on Roberto's stiff and lackluster world. Risi further presents an interesting inversion in the duo of the two characters, as Bruno is actually the older character, yet he represents the more modern Italian. 
Throughout the film, Bruno and Roberto move from Rome to Viajaro, where we eventually see, as Restivo puts it, a society clad in bathing suits and diverting itself from dancing the twist. Another central motif is that of the broken machine, which we see in the cigarette vending machine, the door handle, in the car. Restivo argues that this presents the new Italy as lacking any sort of lasting quality. I would go so far as to say that through these breaks, we see the cheap facade that is this, as described, Italy clad in bathing suits deteriorating throughout the film. In his article, Restivo later explores a significant competition in advertising, journalism, and politics in attempts to pin down the meaning of the new true Italian. He points to a coincidentally placed set of advertisements from the popular magazine L'Espresso, which shows a woman in a tightly clad dress juxtaposed to an advertisement containing a ragged band of partisans. I would argue that this contrast is mirrored throughout the film in that while we see a clear shift to a new identity, we too see undeniable traces of older, more traditional Italian ideals and values. Restivo's article is an important one as it points to and engages several salient patterns in the Italian boom period and parallels them to key moments throughout the film.